Hi, and welcome to Politics Tech Lightning. There's always a business reason behind moving to any of the top cloud providers. The end goal is not to create an empty landing zone and leave it as is. On the contrary, an Azure landing zone is just a first step in putting workloads in the cloud. Most of the businesses, they already have an idea which application can land where in Azure. For this, I actually see two pillars of fundamental knowledge that any Azure architect need to have. First, you need to know the terminology used between the different types of application architectures. I'm referring to monolithic, microservices, and an entire architecture. Secondly, you need to have an understanding of which type of Azure services are applicable for which situation. So let's get into it. Here we go. As a master Azure architect in the infrastructure field, you may not be so well versed with the application part. There are three fundamental terms which should be discussed in any application migration. These are monolithic, microservices, and anterior architecture. Because knowing how the application has been built is vital to the services that you will use and decide in Azure. A monolithic application, it's built as a single unified unit. With this, I mean that the entire application is contained in, for example, a virtual machine or a container. A microservices application, it has different parts of the application split up in different units. The different parts of the application, they run independently of one another. They usually communicate with each other in some form of API. An entry application is one which is usually split up into three tiers as we know them. We have a front end for the UI, application tier which contains the middleware code base, and a database which is the back end database. Let's show this as an example, and we'll use Amazon. Not because Amazon has another cloud service, AWS, but because they have a well-known web shop. The Amazon web shop application it contains many different components. Among those components, they have a shopping cart and a search part where you can search for different toys that you want to buy. In a monolithic application, all these components could be consolidated in one unit running, for example, on a virtual machine. If Amazon decides to update features of the shopping cart, developers will get hard to work. In the monolithic scenario, whenever there's an update to the shopping cart and the service needs to restart, it can also affect the other parts, not just the search part. These components are then using the same underlying resources. If the search part is used more than the shopping cart, you cannot easily scale up only the resources for one part. Moving to a new powerful virtual machine is done then for the, all the units of the application at the same time. This, however, is in stark contract with microservices. If we take the Amazon example and apply microservices to the architecture, we end up somewhere completely different. The shopping cart would run in one Azure resource instance, for example, an app service. The search part is running in another app service. When there are changes to the shopping cart, only affect that code base and unit for those changes. If you need to scale up, well, that's no problem. You scale up only the resources attached to the shopping cart. Then we have the end tier architecture, which follows another concept. Usually there are three tiers which applications are split into. In the case with Amazon, there would be a front end tier where the web services are running. That's just rendering the interface for the shopping cart. And we would have then the search part, which would also be running on the front end where the rendering would be done to the end users. The application tier, it contains all the logic and the application itself. The search part and the shopping cart are also running the business logic here. The Amazon web shop and the front end is then, like I mentioned, the service that renders and sends the data to you, the data you see in the web browser. When you search for one of the cool toys you want to buy, the application tiers run the data logic and fetches the results from the data tier. It then sends it back to the front end, which renders it for you. So you can see a very nice list in your web browser of all the toys you have searched for. There are, of course, other things going on beneath the hood of this application. But for our understanding, it's enough to think of the design patterns like these. Before we dive into which Azure service may be applicable where, it is also important to know that there are benefits and drawbacks with each architecture. A monolithic application is usually easier to be deployed, 
as most of the time it just can contain one installable file. Development is in many cases easier as it's just one code base. Of course, this can be a drawback if the application grows very large. It's low cost to set up the application. It's however more difficult to scale up and out. So you miss a little bit of the flexibility when you are tied to existing tools, even if new ones become available. A microservices application, on the other hand, it's better at scalability, especially at large scale. In the example we saw, it's easier to scale and branch out different types of the applications. It's better with fault isolation. If the shopping cart fails, you know exactly which resource and where to look. It's upfront, it's more expensive than a monolithic application. So a proper application architecture and design with more components than a monolith has to be created. We then have an entire application, which is usually implemented using EAS, virtual machines, running in a separate tier. It's great for simple web applications. Very common in existing on-premise environment, making the migration to Azure easier. And by now, I'm sure you also see that it depends on many factors before the best application architecture is decided. As an Azure architect, it will be very difficult for you to tell the application developers how to design their application. But don't worry, they will take care of that. You need to know which options are available in Azure and which application architecture is being used. Do you have a monolithic application, entire or microservices? Let's say we're dealing with a monolithic application. How do we design and let this land in Azure? Well, there are two things which immediately spring to my mind. Well, virtual machines, or we can use containers using Azure App Service or even Azure Kubernetes Services, AKS. For virtual machine, it's popular to go with virtual machine scale sets in this instance. This means that you can scale out with new VMs as the application requires more processes. For the containerized approach, you have different ways to go about it. I recommend to investigate Azure App Service where you can also use Docker containers. Containers are not bad as they are cloud agnostic meaning you can easily move them to different clouds or different platforms should you have a change of heart. For microservices, we have many more options on how to design and which components to use in Azure to host the application. The core component in Azure is Azure Service Fabric. This is a container orchestration for deploying and managing microservices across a cluster of machines with both Linux and Windows. The microservices are hosted inside containers which are deployed across the service fabric cluster. For entire applications, it can be quite straightforward. The focus is usually virtual machine combined with different PaaS services. In the front end and application tier, we have virtual machines running. The back end database can perfectly reside on, for example, PostgreSQL or any suitable service in Azure. For an infrastructure architect, this was a lot of information to digest. So let's recap what you have to take away and learn from this video. There are three common application architectures. We have the monolith, where the entire application is in one code base. Virtual machine scale set or Docker containers in Azure app services are used. We have microservices, where different parts of the application is split up and can be scaled separately. Azure service fabric can play a key role here. Then we have the entire application architecture which is most commonly used in the on-premise environment. Usually virtual machines in three tiers, along with the database at the backend. We didn't go into more details regarding microservices yet. It's a whole other topic, which easily takes a couple of hours to cover. However, you should now have a good understanding of the different application architectures. So depending on the direction you know that the application architecture is or are going to, you can then design and focus your Azure infrastructure on that part. Hope this information was useful to you. Until next time, take care. See you.